Whatever they decide these UFOs are, the answer will be more U.S. militarism. U.S. warplanes have shot down three unidentified objects in North American airspace over the last three days, which is entirely without precedent. On Sunday, an octagon-shaped object was reportedly shot down over Lake Huron near the Canadian border after being detected some 1,300 miles away over Montana on Saturday night. On Saturday, a cylindrical object was reportedly shot down over Canada's Yukon Territory by an American F-22, and on Friday, an object about the size of a small car was reportedly shot down after being detected over Alaska. Unlike the Chinese balloon that was shot down earlier this month, which the U.S. claims was an instrument of espionage, as of this writing, there's no solid consensus as to what these last three objects were or where they came from. While all three were found at high altitude like the balloon, the Pentagon is refusing to classify them as such, with the head of U.S. Northern Command, General Glenn Van Herc, going so far as to say it hadn't yet been determined how these objects are even staying aloft. I'm not going to categorize them as balloons. We're calling them objects for a reason, Van Herc told the press on Sunday. I'm not able to categorize how they stay aloft. It could be a gaseous type of balloon inside a structure, or it could be some type of a propulsion system. But clearly, they're, they're able to stay aloft. Van Herc also made headlines for saying he couldn't rule out extraterrestrial origin for the objects. To further confuse things, China has detected a UFO of its own that it was preparing to shoot down, according to a report on Sunday. Last month, Russia reported that it had shot down a UFO as well. A report on Saturday said the Air Force of Uruguay is investigating strange lights over the sky in the western part of the country. But of course, it could all still be balloons. Moon of Alabama made a pretty good argument the other day that the object shot down over Alaska was likely a failed U.S. weather balloon. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he was told by the White House that all these mystery objects are believed by U.S. officials to have been Chinese spy balloons, though the White House swiftly disputed this claim, saying it's too early to categorize them as such. For myself, I remain comfortable not knowing what the hell is going on with any of this right now. I've written periodically about how there's an abundance of reasons to be intensely skeptical of the new UFO narrative that entered the mainstream in 2017 under highly suspicious circumstances. But I'm also uninterested in pretending I know everything about this weird universe we've all tumbled into. I remain open to all possibilities, from mundane balloons to a sudden increase in interest in aerial objects that have long been common, to U.S. government PSYOP, to light bulb headed visitors from the great unknown. So I don't really know what these UFOs are, but I do know what they will be used for. It is a very safe bet that whatever the US government determines these objects to be, the response to that determination will feature increased militarism and the advancement of pre existing Pentagon agendas. We're already seeing Florida Congresswoman Anna Polina Luna using the UFO incident to argue for sanctions on China and to accuse Beijing of cyber warfare. And Republicans are already claiming that the threat of Chinese spy balloons means that there can be no cuts to U.S. military spending. In an article titled Chinese Spy Balloon Has GOP Saying No Cuts to Defense, the Hill's Alexander Bolton quotes numerous congressional Republicans arguing that military cuts should be taken off the table in their negotiation over a debt ceiling, and that ideally the spending should be increased. The entire civilized world should recognize that communist China is probably the greatest threat we've ever faced, more severe than Soviet Russia was because of its economic integration into the West, says perpetually war-horny Senator Tom Cotton. We should take every step we can to try to reduce our dependency on China and try to build stronger military deterrence against them. I do not think that we should be talking about cutting the defense budget at all right now. If anything, substantial defense increases, Cotton adds. For the imperial swamp, the answer is always more militarism. 
it doesn't matter what the question is. Whether they decide these UFOs are a foreign threat or something unknown or something else entirely, the solution funneled through the U.S. Empire's groupthink apparatus will entail more military spending and more weapons of war. And again, I remain open to all possibilities, but I do find it very interesting that we're seeing completely unprecedented aerial kinetic warfare in northern American skies, which is certain to lead to more U.S. military expansionism, at the exact same time the U.S. prepares its great power competition against China and the governments aligned with it. As we've discussed previously, the Empire has been going to extraordinary lengths to make sure the public plays along with a long-term campaign to secure U.S. unipolar planetary hegemony. However this UFO narrative ends up playing out, we may be certain that it will be used to facilitate this agenda. <laughs>